In this short video, I'm going to be showing how to use Slicer for Fusion 360 and Maya to create sculptural objects and some techniques of what you can do with them. So let's make something really simple first in Maya. Uh, I'm just going to take a sphere, put it on the grid, and maybe I'll make a few others. And maybe I'll add box and maybe a cone a little big so I'll put that around there maybe I'll stretch the cone a little bit or something and all right let's say that's gonna be maybe I'll stretch that a little too Let's say that's going to be my object. It's going to look something like this. So the first thing I'll do is I need to take all these singular shapes and turn it into a uh, what the computer will see as a single mesh, a single object. So I'm just going to select everything by drawing a box around it and make sure I'm in my modeling menu and then just say mesh combine. So even though they're not really a singular mesh, it's not like a continuous skin or anything like that, uh, the computer will see it as one object. So there it is. And that's all I'm going to do. And so now I'm going to export this selection as an OBJ so that I can get it into Slicer. So I'll just call it something like um, Sculpture. And put it in a folder. And I've exported this as a selection. Now I'm going to open up Slicer for Fusion 360 and I'm going to import the very same sculpture. <coughs> and here it is. And I can use my right click to turn around, it, you know, to navigate around it. I can use my middle mouse pushing it down as a button to move it this way and the left click doesn't seem to do anything, and then the, the wheel, I can zoom in and out. So there's my sculptural object, and so there's my construction technique right here. So let's say I'm gonna use stack slices. We'll immediately turn it into slices that will be stacked up, with the idea being that I'm gonna be cutting out pieces of something like plywood, about the thickness of plywood, and gluing them all together to make my sculpture. And on the side here, it takes my sheets of plywood, it says I need 13 sheets, there's going to be 45 parts, and it shows you how to cut them out and what order to put them in uh, with your CNC router. So you could, first of all, decide well, maybe I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to stack it up. I'm going to do something sideways. And so you might want to change the slice direction. So I'm going to press the slice, slice direction button here. And now I'm going to use my right mouse to make it so I'm looking at it dead on from the side. And then I can click the ring right here, letting it know that I want to change how the slices are going to be by this little blue triangle. And as I move it this direction, I'm going to go until it says 90 degrees. And then that makes my slices exactly at a right angle to where they were before. So I can have a look at it and say, all right, that's pretty cool. But let's say I wanted my slices to go this direction, this up and down angle. Again, I'm going to kind of line this up. So I'm looking directly at it just by using the right mouse. And then I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to take that triangle, the, the, um, or the cone rather, this blue cone, and move it now in this direction until it says 90 degrees again. And then there, there I have it. That's, that's what I want for this particular one. And see they're exactly straight up and down and they go across the model. And anywhere you've got like this dark blue area is generally a problem. It's a model issue. You can look at the model issues and I can say these are unconnected pieces in blue so you can figure out what's going on with that. 
Uh, in this case, I'm not too concerned about that, these unconnected pieces. Um, so that's it for these stack slices. We can look at some other um, configurations later, but let's just worry about these stack slices for a while. And so I'm, I could decide if I want to make these slices thicker or thinner by going to the manufacturer settings right here, the little gear. If I click that, it will then give me some settings here on the bottom and I can change these. Um, so let's say I want to make the thickness of my slices to be thicker. Right now it's 0.1772. Let's say I make it 0.2. They come out a little thicker. If I make it 0.3, thicker still. Um, so maybe I'll make it 0.15. Uh, no, I don't like that. I think I'll make it 0.2. That look pretty good. Uh, yeah, all right. So that's for the purposes of what I'm going to do. I, I, I like that thickness of slice. So that's how you can set that. And there's other things like the tool diameter that you're going to be using for your CNC router, the offset, that sort of thing. Uh, but really mostly concerned about for what I'm going to do right now is for these slices. So now I'm going to save this as an OBJ, an object. So there's uh, on, on the, uh, I click this little triangle right here next to the word slicer. And I can have you know new, open, and all that. Save, save a copy. Export mesh is what I'm interested in. And I've got STL or OBJ as my possibilities. Um, I'm finding OBJ works pretty well. Some, some cases STL works better, and I'll, t I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but OBJ is pretty good. Either one can be imported into Maya. Um, so I'm going to make these OBJs, or singular OBJ. Um, I will then say call it uh, sliced sculpt, perhaps. And what that's going to do inside my folder, it's going to make a zipped up single file. In other words, it's going to be a folder full of a number of things that are all zipped up into a single file. So I'm going to make this come down here. And so here it is, um, slice sculpt.zip. So I can unzip it, double click it a bit. And inside of it, I've got um, some pictures of cardboard. It's assuming I'm going to be doing cardboard. Uh, so it makes these kind of materials. And then uh, the MTL is not too, we're not too concerned about that, but we're concerned about the, the OBJ. And this is what I can uh, drag into Maya. And I'm just, I'm not even going to save my original. You could if you want. Um, and then here it is, the sliced sculpt OBJ. I click on it and it's all together as a singular object and if you want to do any manipulations of this thing um, you'll have to break it into individuals so under mesh I can say separate and it'll generally do a pretty good job of this um, let's say I want to delete uh, every other one because uh, my sculpture is going to be see-through. So I might delete this one by deleting that and kind of just go through here with every other one. As an example. And when I'm done, I will have a sculpture that as I turn, I can see through it and at a different angle, it becomes the sculpt again. Now you'll notice that there's these sort of black areas here. And what these black areas are is the fact that when you export as an OBJ, when Slicer exports the OBJ and you start deleting these things, it's deleting only the, the side of the slice and it's not deleting the front and back faces of it. You can see these sort of really thin front and back faces that are still left over because um, that's just the way it determines the, uh, the slices. It doesn't hook those together. When I hit, when I hit that um, mesh separate, it separates even the parts of the uh, polygons. So you do have to do a little cleaning up. In other words, you have to get rid of these things. You kind of get rid of these leftover bits like this. And sometimes they're a little hard to select, but most of the time, you, if you just a little, little bit of trickiness, you can just start to select these 
can start to get rid of those leftovers. And you have to do it on, see that's, that one's a little harder to select. I'm gonna keep going until I select just the internal bit. Yeah, still having trouble. Sometimes you gotta change the angle or zoom in. I don't wanna get this whole piece right here. If I hit delete now, it becomes hollow. And I don't wanna do that. I'll put that back. What I'm trying to get is there, that bit right there. That's what I want to delete. That's the leftover bit. And you can also see where it put the uh, pieces together. These are these sort of little dowel pins that are putting the slices together. And you just have to kind of keep at this a little bit. If you, depending on what angle you get, um, you can get these things to sort of stick out and make it much easier to select and delete, to sort of separate it from what needs to be still there until finally you have no more of the black, it's called Z fighting, when you've got one layer on top of another layer that's so close that it's hard for the computer to figure out what to show, what to display. And so it makes these kind of jagged lines here. Um, Z is depth, so it's, it's, they call it Z fighting, fighting for, for depth, who's gonna be deeper than the other. Uh, in any case, so that's where you can start to finally clean this up. Um, and you can do further manipulations with it, right? Because these are separated slices now. And so let's say now I want to select just some of them and offset them. Something like this. I can further manipulate this object. Select that a little bit better. Changing the shape. Perhaps I want to add a part that's going to hold it all together. Let's say I might then build a sheet like this. Maybe that's what's going to start to hold these things together um, as a sculptural object. So let's say some, you know, that's 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 my sculpture there. So I've got these layers that I might cut out of whatever material it, it's going to be. It might be metal. It might be wood. Um, whatever it's going to be, and then I've got my object. Maybe I want to make a base for it. Let's, let's say it's going to stand up like this. I don't see exactly where that is located. There we go. Let's see what's happening here. And there's my, my large outdoor sculpture you know, something like that. Um, okay, so let's go back to uh, Slicer now. And so that was one way to kind of go at this. Perhaps um, there could be interlock slices like this, changing what it's going to look like. And this sort of fits together like a puzzle. And Slicer will then show you exactly what piece fits where on the side as you cut these out of sheets. So this changes things. And if you go into, again, if you go into your manufacturing settings, you could still change like, you know, the thicknesses of some of these um, pieces here if you want. 0.02 is not so good. What about 0.2, a little bit thicker, maybe 0.3. So you can continue to manipulate this. You can also talk, you know, talk about first axis, second axis, changing the number of pieces like this. So you have a lot of control over this, changing your, what your model is going to be. Curves, makes kind of these curvy slices. So 
just playing with these numbers here. And here the red areas are the, are the trouble, the trouble areas. So sometimes if you play with the numbers, you can get rid of the trouble areas, or sometimes you cause more. Radial slices creates a axis in the very middle and then runs the slices around it. Folded, this is if you are taking a piece of paper and cutting it out and then putting folds in it and then turning it into like a folded puzzle. Got nothing but red here, so that's not good. So I've got a lot, a lot of issues with this particular fold. So I might take these vertices down a bit. Let's see if I can get rid of some of that red. No, it doesn't like it. So you really want to, you really want everything to be blue. You can see the blue area here, number two, is fine. This red area, I, th I think it's because it's falling off um, the piece of material, or perhaps it just won't fold well. And finally, 3D slices takes a little while to compute. Oh, that, that wasn't too bad. It'll often take a, a lot longer to compute. What it's doing is it's making the same kinds of slices to stack it up, except these slices, rather than being square edged in this little step pattern, it's actually carving each slice with a CNC router. So you're actually getting this nice angle. And that you can uh, if you want to glue all your sheets together, it would just take a little bit of sanding at the end to just kind of smooth these transitions just a tiny bit. Um, and then that it's pretty much ready to be your sculpted objects is looking like a solid piece of, of wood, let's say. Um, okay, so that's it. Uh, that's all I'm going to show for this. And it gives you an idea of how to work between Maya and Slicer for Fusion 360 to make sculptural objects.